So you want to display some kind of value in a boss bar, but you want it to be player specific and you're worried about that being multiplayer friendly. Well, in this video, we are going to be covering exactly how to do that. In the description, there's a data pack and I'm going to go through that data pack very quickly and to kind of explain to you how it works, what each line of code does, and how you can expand it and make it work in your project. So inside the data pack, there's a namespace called boss bar. Obviously, when you actually implement this in your data pack, I would hope that instead of just copying my data pack, you actually figure out how the code works and implement it into functions that exist somewhere in your own data pack with reasonable folder pathing, because I did not add any folders here. Uh, and inside it, there's basically just functions. There is a main, which runs every tick of the game, and an init, which runs at the uh, when you type slash reload or when you first join. And so for the demonstration purposes, in the sidebar, I have created a player-specific score called mana. And when I flick this switch, the mana goes up. When I flick this, it goes down. And I'm sorry that I don't have an alt account to pull up here today, but trust me, this will work for multiplayer. Um, if I have a mana score, it will display the boss bar differently for me than somebody else. And this is actually kind of tedious to accomplish because in order to actually do it, you need to have one boss bar per simultaneous player that can view a boss bar. And so what that means is that if your server's max player count is 20, which is the default servers, you're actually going to want 20 of these boss bars uh, with unique numbers and not just three. However, I've only implemented three. It is up to you to expand it. Should be pretty easy. And so this works for three boss bars and you can customize them however you want. This is just a blank white boss bar. And I set the max to 20. And so we also have a scoreboard called boss bar, which is actually going to hold the ID of each player uh, and what boss bar they're supposed to be viewing. And then finally, we have a scoreboard called left, which basically just tracks when a player leaves the game. And so every tick of the game, it checks for new users, aka people that do not have this user tag or people that have left the game recently. And then it runs boss bar join for them. And boss bar join gives them that tag and resets their left score just so that it doesn't spam it. Then the other important thing it does is it does assign ID. So the point of this system is every player in the world will have a unique number that links them to a boss bar, which they view and edit or it copies their values onto. And so you want to have a unique ID. So you need a special function to assign a unique ID. Now, what this special function does is it increments a fake player called ID, and it kind of just loops through all the possible values. In this case, the values could be one, two, or three. And so when it reaches four, which is a invalid value, then loop back to one. And so we're constantly just incrementing the value and looping back when we get past three. And so this value is then searched for. So basically what we do is we go to every player and we say, do you have a value equal to the current ID that it is looking at? If you do, if anybody matches this, it will set the found flag to one. And uh, even if multiple people matched it, it would still set the found flag to one. This is just a safety precaution. Um, but previously we set the found flag to zero. And so if this next command does not find anybody, then found will still will be zero, meaning nobody has the ID already, meaning you are safe to take this ID. But if the ID that you're looking at is already occupied, which could be a case where uh, I have player one player that gets the ID of one, another player gets the ID of two, another player gets the ID of three, player two disconnects and leaves the game. Well, the next person who joins needs to take two's spot. So first it will check one, one will be occupied, and then it will go to two, and it'll pick two. And so when found is zero, it will say we have a match. If found is one, it will recursively run itself. And this is where you need to make sure that every player that can be connected simultaneously could have a boss bar because I did not add any safety precautions for the case where a player joins and all the IDs are occupied because you only hard coded three and there's four people allowed online. And so that would actually make this run 65, 536 commands. The recursion would just uh, basically pause or break commands for one tick. And so you don't want that to happen. 
So um, make sure that there is one boss bar for each simultaneous player. Next, what does assign ID do? Well, obviously it's going to copy the ID to the player so they get the one that we're looking at, but it also needs to do something else interesting because one thing that you might know is that the players that are able to see a boss bar uh, are defined by boss bar set players. And you also want to make sure that all the others get reset as well. And the reason for that is you don't want somebody, and I have a little typo, but uh, you don't want somebody with boss bar one to leave the game, rejoin the game, and they get assigned boss bar two, but now they have two boss bars on their screen because they are set to be a player that sees boss bar one and boss bar two. And so what I do is basically um, it go to all of the options. So if you, the people that are allowed to see boss bar one are only people with the score of boss bar one, and it will clear any people that don't match this criteria. And I do the same for boss bar two and the same for boss bar three. So this updates who can actually see the boss bar. Then that's it, okay? That's all you have to do. Now we actually have a couple commands for working and manipulating these. So every tick, anybody that has a boss bar assigned is going to have copy val, and copy val is going to copy mana onto the boss bar for that specific player. And so in copy val, we basically say, if you are boss bar one, then store the result onto boss bar one's value uh, and run scoreboard players get mana. If you are boss bar two, store onto boss bar two mana. If you are boss bar three, store onto boss bar three mana. And this will basically just copy it regardless of which boss bar you are, and you'll just be assigned the proper one. Another two other commands that I actually also added, functions I also added that are nice, is boss bar hide and boss bar show. And these can be useful for turning on and off boss bars for something like I showed um, maybe in the beginning where I have a mob HP displayed inside of a boss bar and maybe you want to hide it once the mob dies because it's irrelevant. And so you can run slash function as the player that you want to make their boss bar hidden or shown. And you can run show and you can run hide and you can copy, it will copy the value when you run this. Obviously for the most efficient implementation of this, instead of running copy val every single tick, you would run copy val when you change the value. So whatever command you have that, uh, whatever function you have that runs adding to the mana, you would also run the function copy val. Uh, that would just make it a little more efficient, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And so we can always run show, we can run hide, we can do scoreboard players set at s left one, uh, and it will give us a new scoreboard, but it will quickly update that. And we can do show and hide for the exact same one, just like that. So everything working properly. If you guys thought this was useful, leave a like, let me know what you wanna see next. I just thought that this was something interesting I should show because I added it to a project that I'm working on that I might've shown a little preview of in the beginning. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.